George Kilpatrick, inspiration for the nation, celebrating people we feel good about. Nigel Henry joins us, CEO of Human Greatness Activation. This week, we were all shocked to know that the Supreme Court, uh, in its decision last week, basically overturned Roe v. Wade, the constitutional right to an abortion in the United States does not exist anymore. Now the states, states like New York and other states have, when they saw the draft opinion, they codified their laws to make sure that everyone in at least New York has the right to choose. But in conversations that I've had, and first of all, as, as an ally, as a male ally in this fight, in conversations that I've had, I've heard people say that this seems hopeless because the Supreme Court has cemented uh, in its decision, just like they gave women uh, the constitutional right back in 1973, have now taken that right away. And so there was a feeling of hopelessness. And so, Nigel, when I think about this perception of hopelessness, I think that this is something not only that affects how we feel about this legislation, but it can affect how we think about our lives, our communities. And so the thing that you and I are talking about uh, today is how to liberate our thinking and get out of the mindset of hopelessness. All right, so, 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 so Lionel, you've got some thoughts about how we can liberate ourselves from this perception of hopelessness. Let's talk about some of those ways that that happens. And you believe that this is an illusion. Talk to me. Um, yeah, I think one of my first response is like, hopelessness means a state of not being hopeful. And automatically, anytime I hear the word not, which is a virus word, I hear malfunction. Mm -hmm. From my awareness, all human beings were created with the spirit of hope mm -hmm. in them. And every time I think of spirit of hope, I think of George Kilpatrick, inspiration for the nation. Like, that's him. And so if you're not seeing hope and possibility, then something is interfering with your mind. And so how do we move then, Nigel, out of this idea of hopelessness and, and, and moving towards a place of hope. What are the ways in which we do that? Because you suggest that right. hopelessness is not our natural state. It's, it's not. not. Yeah, it's, but, but how do we, but we, we tend What's to the go there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a conditioned response and it was intentional. So if I would like to shut down George and his family, for example, so that they go to depression and, and leave the neighborhood, I would remove your rights and, how you can't do this and make it so unpleasant for you that you would lose the aspiration to be where you feel comfortable. And I man, it's hopeless being here. We need to get out of here, which is exactly what I intended when I changed the conditions of your environment. So the first action is to realize that any feeling of hopelessness is infliction. Like something, somebody put something in the food or the water to make me think this way. This is not right. So just the awareness is the first step. Uh-oh, I'm feeling hopeless. Something's wrong. Next step is actions to restore hope. This is mm -hmm. what you're asking me. Right. And the first thing, this comes back to our theme for liberation thinking is say something. Mm -hmm. Disrupt whatever was said, like the, 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 the ruling of the courts, Yes, the court has said something, but I can say something too, right? And I can say, I think it should be this way. And the only thing is there's bigger voices than me. And that's the whole point. Somebody else's voice has caused my state. What if I believe that there is a correct way to move forward? Should I be quiet and say, well, you know, the court's rude? Or should I speak up and appeal to the courts? First thing is say something, George, first, first action. Does that make sense? You're on, on mute. On mute. George, you're muted. Yes. Yeah. I what I was gonna what I'm at what I'm saying to you is I want to go back to something you said earlier because 
you you insist that the external doesn't is, yes. is it, it, yes. it, it, that it doesn't matter. But I'm going to say to you that, however, oh. the mm -hmm. environment systemically going back to laws and policies, et cetera, do in fact contribute to that state of hopelessness because these are things that the government, if you will, throughout the years, especially as it pertains to black folk, have done to 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 yes. create this this illusion of hopelessness systemically, Absolutely. right? It's just it's a systemic thing. We've had to throughout history raise our voices, as you suggest, and disrupt yes. it. And and, yes. and 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 we've had gradual success, but we I find know. ourselves in a moment now in history where all of yeah. the things that we've learned that that we back again. It's back again. We got to. I'm with you. Well, yeah, the point right? you made, George, was very important. You said, well, I think you misquoted me, but I think I heard is the environment doesn't matter. I'm like, the environment matters. The environment right. is what's creating this illusionary state. But don't let it, don't let it. Well, shape. well, it don't, it, you say, if you say don't let the environment shape you, it's like trivializing the power of the environment. The environment shapes. It is a powerful instrument of conditioning. So don't underestimate the power of the environment. However, the fundamental nature of humans is that we shape our environment, not the other way around. But if I can get you to believe that your environment is shaping you, then I have control over you, George. But right. if I remind you that you were sent on this earth to shape your environment, now we have a little conflict going on. Because, Go because if I don't, if I... When I do allow my internal state to, to control, shape and control my uh, environment, my external and my external oh, environment, right? Yeah. Then I, 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 I then don't fall into the trap well, that ends up well, happening when I, which leads I'm to with you. depression, so this is which the also leads to victimhood. For. But, but I, I know it's true, right? So I. We can talk about what happens when I let my environment control my internal. Yes, I automatically get into depression. And depression is the precursor to victimhood. You lose hope. You're like, oh, my God, woe is me. I can't do nothing. The environment's affecting me, right? That's why we don't want to allow it to even, don't even consider it. As soon as you notice it, we got to kill it right away. Now, what... The reason why we're doing that is because, it's, as I said at the beginning, it's an unnatural state. If you want to kill the human spirit, take away hope. Mm. Set up systematic systems in the environment to bring down hope. It's set up. You're right. I'm saying to you, just because it's systematic and it's well-structured, it doesn't really have dominion over your internal. You were built to dominate your environment, and it's called sovereignty, George. Sovereignty. So then, uh, in closing, Nigel. Okay. Yes, George. How do I then take this to liberate my thinking so that I don't, so that I choose hope rather than Thank hopelessness? You. you see what I did there? First then? thing, beautiful, George. I saw the choice. That's the truth. The first thing is to know that I always have choice. I don't care how systematic the ruling is and the state, whatever, I still have choice, but every choice has consequence. And some of our great forefathers and foremothers have died because they exercise that choice and they're willing to die for the choice to remain sovereign. That's the thing. You got to stand up for your rights is a great Bob Marley. Get myself. up, stand up. Stand up. Stand up for stand your up rights. Stand up for your rights. And don't Doesn't give up matter. the fight. The fight. And yes. the fight is verbal. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't give up the fight. So George, can we remind the people of the, the offer? Or? Go ahead. Let's go. So my peoples, um, the, at the end of the day, it comes down to freedom. Liberation is about freedom. And freedom in America is cash flow. The more money you have is the more you can change that legislation. It's whoever, that's what they mean by lobbying. They're paying to influence people. So you need to use your money maker to get more cash flow in your life. 
the money maker. My voice is my money maker. So in collaboration with George, I created a program called the Financial Miracle Challenge, where we challenged all liberating thinkers, all change makers, all change angels, all the people like who have the spirit of George and believe in the hope of the people. We challenge you to use your voice to make money in five days as much as you can so that you can see that you have the power to change your environment because you can create the cash flow to buy your own systems, to put up your own infrastructure, to keep your own bubble in this world that you live in. So it's called the Financial Miracle Challenge. It's at website greatnessactivation.com forward slash FMC. And so if you have any questions about it, call George and he will enlighten you, or you can call me, but George is my main guy that we're liberating the people. Does let's that help, George? How is that? that? Let's liberate the people, greatnessactivation.com forward, forward slash, slash, give me the- FMC, Financial Miracle Challenge. Greatnessactivation.com forward slash F. MC Nigel Henry, CEO of Human Greatness Activation. Let's liberate our minds and liberate our thinking and choose hope rather than hope. Put money in the bank. Put money in the bank. <laughs> Inspiration for the nation. Thank you, Nigel. All right, George. Okay.